I think in general, we see positive confirmation that it's a step in the right direction. The reason being that most people see solidarity or more importantly, stability in society as a prerequisite for economic growth. And as I've highlighted earlier, how we can consolidate Hong Kong as an IFC and to move forward, not just at a capital formation center and to become a wealth management and risk management center, we need to have a stable society. And that's exactly what the NSL will provide for. And Secretary, many were caught by surprise when HSBC and Standard Chartered threw their support behind this national security bill. And it does raise the concern among some multinationals, perhaps, that it's becoming more difficult to be politically neutral in Hong Kong. What would you say to companies who worry that perhaps they have to show their allegiance to policies in Beijing in order to remain successful in Hong Kong? I think the success of Hong Kong is very much the fact that we are a very market-driven economy. And the success of a market-driven economy relies on the success of our corporates. And that's not going to change. And even with the NSL law, basically what we will see is a more stable society, which will provide a more solid foundation for the economy to grow further. Okay, understood. And Secretary, we do have our colleague Emily reconnected here on the line, so I just want to invite her to come into the conversation. Hi, Emily. Uh, Mr. Secretary, good morning to you. Uh, very good morning. to see you. I want to ask you a following up on that. Uh, the United States has threatened uh, to strip Hong Kong of the preferential treatment. What impact would that have on the businesses as well as the market in the event that the U.S. actually acts on those, on those mm -hmm. sanctions? Uh, I must say, as all of you understand, Hong Kong as an IFC is deeply embedded in the global economic and financial infrastructure. And basically, the situation is that even though there are sanctions or also measures being talked about, I think it's important to take note of the fact that, first of all, any measure to be launched or to be announced by either side is going to be harmful on both sides. That's number one. And number two is that, in so far U.S. is concerned, we are actually running a trade surplus to them. So they basically they have more to lose if there's anything happening to our trade relations. And thirdly, if you talk about American interest in Hong Kong and also American people in Hong Kong, as all of you understand, there's a quite a cluster of people here. And so I'm sure this relationship will continue taking into account the unique role of Hong Kong as an IFC. Are there any other key industries or companies where the government is seeing red flags? Who and what are they? I think right now, uh, as all of you know, we are taking a three-pronged approach to revive the economy. Number one is about relaxation of certain restrictions of economic activities. And number two is some um, relief measures, both community-wide and also sector-specific. Specific. And thirdly, it's about development, how we can carry on to use our financial DNA to further our role as an IFC and also alongside other economic development initiatives. And we will continue this three-pronged strategy and continue to monitor the situation should there be the need to involve in other arrangements.